The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We start out with the German DAX, as you can see. It completed a nice little ABCD Gartley pattern last night up there at that 11,000 and change. Sold off a little bit. Um, that's quite a bit for the DAX, but anyway, it moved in the right direction. Whether that's going to be continuing or not, of course, we don't know. Now, we had a couple questions today. Uh, about some things. The first one was the uh, Treasury bond. Someone asked the question. Let me get the chart up so we'll be able to uh, take a quick look at it here. Just give me one second. I make sure I get the right chart. Oh, make sure I get the right chart. And where is the right chart? Oh, dear. I lost it again. Anyway, Bill Meridian will be my guest here uh, at the uh, at the break, hopefully. And uh, we want to be uh, chatting with him. Uh, let's, this is it right here. Hold on. Now that's the Canadian dollar. It's doing the same thing. Ah, shucks. This is not good. I had this thing all ready to go. And now let's just get, to, here's what I want to talk about folks. The, uh, treasury bonds and treasury notes have just completed a, a shooting star pattern, uh, candle. And if you'll go back here over this four-year period, you'll see there's not very many of them. But when they do occur, they lead to a pretty substantial break. Some of them more substantial than others, but they're still tradable. So we just had one of those in both notes and bonds accompanied by either a drop in open interest or no increase at all. And that's on a big move up. So that is usually you know, not a bullish phenomenon. But uh, I will be doing the newsletter, and I'll be focusing on that particular pattern uh, in the notes and the bonds as we go into uh, next week. Uh, here is another one that I wanted to show you the same, just to show you the pattern. This is the uh, Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar. And if you take a look at it, you can see that we had a shooting star at the very high up there in uh, late May. And look what we had two days ago. We had a beautiful right at the 61% retracement, A, B, C, D, perfect. You know, it's dropped 150 pips from that level. So that tells you that shooting star pattern has worked. You don't see them very often. The opposite of the shooting star pattern is the hammer. In other words, a hammer pushes the market down and then it snaps back up. Okay, those are just a couple of the things that I wanted to cover. The next question was about the treasury bonds themselves. The question was posed, what would happen if you had bought the bonds back in 19 in August of 1982 when they were uh, near their lows at 54? That means a, a hundred thousand dollar bond was was selling for 54, 54 thousand dollars. Well, it's that that bond was yielding about 12 percent at that time because because it was a six percent bond cut in half, so it was yielding about 12 percent. To compound it over a 30-some year period, 36-year uh, period, it's hard to do because the, the, the interest rates start dropping at that time. So the, the amount of interest that you would have gained from a $100,000 bond back in that day was $645,000. Plus, the value of the bond went from $50,000 to $150,000. So it was about nine times is what uh, you would have made during that time. Not as good as if you'd have bought Apple or Google or Facebook, but still, AAA rated is not too bad. But anyway, that's the rough idea. I ran that by a couple of statisticians, and they said that was about as close as you're going to get because of the variations uh, in the yield as the bonds expire and move on, move on to the next one. So that's what we're that's what we're talking about here this morning. So we take uh, pretty good. Gold is still strong, folks. Nothing looks negative about the gold, even though we're way up here. And we hit 15, 20, two days in a row. The little back-offs mean nothing. I mean, if this were a top, the market would already start down, and it hasn't done that. Uh, 1,500 is uh, a nice ABCD pattern. It held that. The 1,506 held it this morning. That was a 78% of that move. So unless we go below 1,506, 
this market is still destined to go higher. The long-term weekly chart on silver, of course, you know, it made a high up there with a shooting star type pattern at uh, 1740. We're trading around 1703 or something in the in the silver right now. So there's a possibility that that could be happening, but that's still something that we have to look at over the weekend to get a better idea of what's going on. Another thing that happened uh, this week that is relatively important, so we had a grain report and it came out and it was relatively bullish to corn and beans and wheat. And I wanted to bring up the bean chart to show you uh, you know what the beans did. We had a nice ABCD pattern uh, in the uh, November, excuse me, this is December corn that we have up here this morning. And uh, that came in, uh, we were looking at 402, we're now trading it at 419, so that's in, so we'll see. Um, Elliott Wave, and Marshall has told me that the Elliott Wave people have given us a target of 1586 to 1597. So that's what we'll write down, and we will be focusing on 1586 to 1587 if you are an Elliott technician. And I is not one. I is a poor pattern recognition swing trader from Terre Haute, Indiana. And that's all I do. If you ever saw the movie uh, uh, City Slickers with Jack Palance and Billy Crystal, do you remember he was the foreman and Jack Palance would raise his one finger? And he says, what do you mean? Do what, one thing, one thing. And the end of the movie was do one thing good. And the one thing I do good is I look at patterns and I see patterns. Sometimes they lose, sometimes they don't, but they win more than they lose. And that's the key. And you lose less on the ones that you win and more on the one that you win on. So that's it. It's not how much money you make, folks. It's how much money you don't lose. Keep that in mind. Now, we also had a question about the bit. Here's the Bitcoin. We've got Bitcoin setting up in here. You'll see that we've been uh, running around here uh, this is a four-hour chart, so this is several days from the 5th through where we are in the 9th, so it's four days. We've been hugging, hugging this area here, much like we've done in the gold, uh, and the gold has had a run-up, and they're, they're saying there's a correlation between Bitcoin and gold, and if that's the case, uh, when Bitcoin was going from 19,000 to 3,000, gold was still going up, so forget the correlation study, okay, folks? Focus on what's available today. This has stopped at the 61% retracement. We have three lower highs in here, so until Bitcoin can clear 12,400, it's in for a correction of April to see. Uh, Peter from Park City is telling us that 1586 is the 61% retracement from the all-time high, which is 1932, back in August of 11, 2011, and the low at 50. I wonder what their exact ratio is now, Peter. You want to calculate that for me? That would be a really good thing to do. So let's keep a close eye on that. Okay. Yeah, his name was uh, Curly. That's right. <laughs> Very good, David. You got David. But you got such a source of information, you, you should be called Mr. Google, for heaven's sakes. Okay, let's move on to uh, the, the thing. We do have gold and silver in a little overbought situation, folks. Go, so they could easily see a $60 to $100 correction in gold without even damaging the bull move. Uh, you know, that's a, that wouldn't even bother, uh, bother it a bit. So keep a close eye on that. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're going to have Bill Meridian on at the break. He'll be on at the half-hour break. I'll try to keep you entertained until Bill gets here. If you remember the last time he was on, he was very, very bullish on uh, the gold market just as it was breaking out of uh, the 1,400 level. Of course, we ran $120. It was the biggest uh, week, uh, biggest weekly move in uh, gold in five years, I think they said, on uh, on Bloomberg. It moved $120 uh, uh, which is quite a bit. All right, let's. Uh, I posted the chart uh, of the um, Treasury notes showing you that shooting star pattern. Now, like we say, these things fail. If this, if the notes close really strong today, this will not be a shooting star pattern. And uh, we are noticing that the uh, open interest is certainly uh, not increasing. It de de decreased the first three days of them, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yesterday was a very small uh, increase in open interest uh, in the 30 year, or excuse me, the two year and the five year and the 10 year. I got that wrong. It's a two year and the Five-year, two-year, and the ten-year had a small increase, but the five-year, which is the second most popular, had a substantial decrease. So the net increase was a decrease in the open interest. So whether that means anything or not, you know, we have to wait and see technically what's going to happen with the rever uh, uh, what do you call it? inverse uh, negative interest rate. So we'll see. Okay, yes, you're right, Terry. It's tough when it, things go vertical like that. It's tough, and that's why you got to take. If you're going to try it, you got to take little bits and pieces. You can't stand in front of that falling knife. That's for sure. It's pretty, uh, pretty tough uh, when you do that. You know, that, that's not. You know, it's okay to try that. It really is. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But you know, you do it twice, and if you miss it, then you know, wait and see. That's uh, basically the bottom line. Uh, someone's asked a question about the grain report. It was uh, construed as bullish. Now, remember, we're, we're not going to be selling any grain to China, it looks like. Well, who are they going to buy from? Well, what's going to happen is they're going to uh, – someone from Spain is going to buy our corn and turn around and sell it to them, drop ship it. So just, just think that we're not going to be selling that stuff is wrong. It's just that it's going to go through a different channel. You know, you got to think about how those – they got 1.5 million people to feed, and it's certainly not going to be uh, easy to do that if this crop that we have has any trouble at all, folks. And believe me, we, we haven't had a major crop 
collapse here in the grains, uh, boy, it's been a long, long time. But if it does, you know, that's it. Remember, folks, uh, that the uh, that <laughs> the one thing you can't do is if you start not feeding people, you got big problems. So that's it. Now we we have basically. Uh, very little food inflation here, you know, with the exception of cattle and hogs. Uh, you know, the rest of it has been relatively cheap. But flu food inflation is a is a problem in China, folks. It's, uh, you know, they've got well, just like any other country, everybody's got problems. Let's look at the charts. That I understand. Um, we're having a, you know, this is going to be the market broke badly this week. Let's just go through and just show you what happened. Uh, we'll just get the uh, the arrows back, and we'll see where we are. We got all of the – as a matter of fact, if you would have left for a week, other than having the worst week that we've had in several years on Monday and Tuesday, the market is basically back where it was last Sunday night. And uh, maybe that's bullish. I don't know. The charts don't think that it's bullish, but – you know, the charts can be wrong sometimes, so we're going to find out. The rallies that we've had in some of the key indices, like the banking index and the financial index, has been very, very poor. But the uh, technical rallies, you know, came pretty good. The NASDAQ is lagging behind the S&P, but we did complete an ABCD yesterday in the and the S&P over three days. That number came in at 29.38. The high was 29.40. And uh, if we close above 29.40, we'll probably be looking at a strong Friday, and it might get uh, up into that uh, same level again. But the overall, um, I think there was a shot across the bow when we had that big down move. Uh, that scared a lot of people. Now they're coming back into the market on lower volume, but that means something. Uh, if you go back and look at it historically, those big moves signaled you know, danger. And the, and the VIX index, which David White talked about this morning on, while he was chatting here in the room, you know, it was not saying that the market was going to go straight south. The VIX was not going crazy. You know, it was up 15, 20 percent. That's nothing when the Dow's down 995 points, which was the largest drop we've ever had. Not on a percentage basis, but the largest drop that we've ever had. So we're going to find out how much strength this has this morning as we get ready, you know, to look at what's going on. Uh, the real, real interesting one, folks, if you remember, we were very, very bullish to crude oil the other day, and that's been a, a really big move. Uh, we had those double ABCDs down there, and it just uh, exploded to the upside. And uh, now we're, we're uh, getting back to those highs of last week. And that's going to be really interesting. We're, we're going to be a really interesting pattern, you know, to watch. So keep a close eye on that. Now, I did want to bring to your attention one other commodity that's known as Dr. Copper. And we'll get this up here to take a look at it because we've had a big breakdown in copper. We'll put this up here. And you'll see that uh, uh, copper is going to have a lot of resistance up here, uh, supposedly around the 263, 264 area. Uh, this is a daily chart. And as you can see here, we bottomed down here, took out the previous lows of December by a little bit, around 253, and we've been able to rally about seven cents. But it's going to get into 263. It's going to be some type of uh, resistance at that point. So pay close attention if you trade copper. That's going to be a real interesting one because that also has that 20 man line in there that can act as a fulcrum. So there's a potential for copper to get very, very bearish if it doesn't get above that 263 level. So that is another one that we want to watch. Um, the crude oil basically was that, Ruby, This I don't know about the spreads. <laughs> I could give you my... Here, I'll give you my definition of a spread. Dave Nelson is the one of the, and Oscar McClure were the two guys that taught me fundamental stuff when I was at Conti way back in 1968, 69, and 70. And Oscar was a really, really a guy uh, right out of Damon Runyon's uh, novels. Uh, he had spats and he wore suspenders and he had a fedora hat and he was, <laughs> he was really well dressed. And uh, we were sitting there one day and we were talking about spreads. And Oscar said, You see that? pencil over there and I said yeah he said pick up that pencil and bring it to me so he gave me the pencil and he said now I want you to hold the left hand of the pencil with one hand and I want you to hold the other part of the pencil in your right hand and he said consider this as a spread he said a spread is like a 
like poop on both ends. It doesn't make any difference what end you go of. When you let go over the spread, you're still holding on to poop. So that's my opinion of spreads. I know they work, but I have no interest in them. I, I really, uh, this is too much trading flat positions or, you know, that's it. Now, we're doing a cross rate. That's not a spread. You're just crossing two, uh, you know, cross rate in currencies like the Canadian versus the U.S., the U.S. versus the N, the Canadian versus the N. Those are just cross rates. So you can trade those separately. But a spread is where you're betting on one option or one contract versus another or or one if it's in an intermarket spread like crude versus natural gas, that type of stuff. They chart very well. I just don't have the time or the interest to do it. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Bill Meridian. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, uh, we've got in touch with Bill Meridian, but unfortunately we've not been able to get him into uh, TFNN, so hopefully he will uh, call in to TFNN, and maybe TFNN would call Bill and we'll get him up and running here, but uh, he's on the line here somewhere, but we'll get him touched a uh, minute. Before we, well, so while we're waiting on doing that, I wanted to uh, bring one other uh, market to your attention here that's under the gun again, making a, what we think is a very important double bottom. There we go. Bill, are you there? 
Yeah, I'm right here. Hey, thank you very much, my friend. Hey, first of yep. all, congratulations on that incredible call on gold. Uh, you were on two weeks ago, if you remember, and uh, you yep. said this gold is getting ready to go, and boy, did it go. Congratulations, buddy. That was a beauty. Thank you. Okay, let me get uh, – what would you like to talk about this morning? I've got your oh, Do you have my presentation? Yeah, I do. I have them ready to go here. I'm. Uh, it's got it right here. The, the Larry P. Show. We'll get it up. And uh, there's the first chart. Let's show what we're going to be talking about today. Bill, uh, one of the questions well, uh, we're getting from one of yeah. our. Do you do you buy calls on these things, or how do you uh, how do you trade? Do you use stocks, or what is it you use for uh, for trading uh, when you're when you get a you know a situation like that in gold? Well, for almost all markets, I use the either the single or the double long or short ETFs. Okay. And and occasionally, when I feel when I want to have a very uh, brief uh, when I see a very brief move coming up that I want to take advantage of, I will buy uh, puts or calls on stocks on the spy. Um, uh, generally, not on the bonds and gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, go ahead and start, my friend. We'll be happy to sure. move on when you tell me to. Okay, well, the, the summary is stocks, the cycle still points down despite the rally over the last couple of days, and I'll speak about that. Bonds, uh, I think uh, the rally is intact through August. Gold rally is intact through August. Oil <clears throat> is um, due to fall. We'll look at that, I think, in August. And by the way, if oil closes the month of August lower, it generally is bearish through the end of the year, and that is exactly what the monthly cycle points to. And I also did some geopolitical work on Hong Kong. So mm -hmm. if we move okay. to the next slide, the S&P 500 index, you can see that it turned down and it bounced back almost immediately. So let's go to the next slide, which is weekly. And um, that is the weekly side, s slide. It points up until August 20th. So it's currently the ninth. I think the longest this rally could last is up until about the 15th. And then I think it turns back down again. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to see the what I call the extended view. Okay. That is the extended view, which is on page five of the monthly cycle. And you'll notice where the buy was all the way at the left-hand side of the screen back in late December of 2018, then you see the sell was very effective. That occurred in late May, uh, late April. Then the buy, next buy signal was effective, and it topped a little short of this sell index, but the next buy is right at the end of this month, around April, uh, August 28th. And then we don't get another sell until early January, which I would take very seriously because it is supported by other down cycles. So if we go one more slide down to breadth, Okay. And if I get this bread, well, you see the advanced decline line, there's no real damage in the overall bread line. And so to get a better picture on that, and one of the indicators I follow regularly is the 10 day moving average of advances minus declines. And you'll note that there were a series of lower highs, the first high being in uh, January, then the next high being in April, and the next high in June. And on down. So that's one of the reasons I thought the down cycle was confirmed. But now you've got a low, and the low is at a higher level than the previous uh, early June low. So that is supportive of higher prices over the short term. And I'll show you what the on the next slide. I'll I'll show you what the difficulty is in making projections. Uh, this is the American Association of Individual Investors weekly poll. And you could see on July 27th, there were 31.7% bulls, 36.2% bears. Then the market declined. And the number of bulls went from 31.7 to 38.4, which is completely illogical. In other words, they were buying the dip in a week, in a, in a week mark. And I, the minute I saw that, I said, the market's going to get clobbered. And uh, that was uh, Thursday, August 4th. Now look at it. Uh, August 11th, that's last night. Um, well, I got the wrong date in there. I, I always put Sunday dates in. But this is last night's number, 21.7% bulls. And it's down from 384 And when you get a shift like that, you know, I had to look back 
on May 19th, we had a shift that wasn't even this big. It was like 11 percentage points, and the market dropped two more weeks before bottoming. July 15th, 2018, I had to go back that far, and then all the way back to November 2016, uh, I can't even find a, a, a swing that's that big. That's like 16, 17 percent in one week. So the difficulty with doing this is the sentiment shifts very, very rapidly. And if you remember the last time I was on, I pointed out that hedge funds were underexposed to equities all year long, and they were up only 7% in the first six months of the year. And um, suddenly, they ratcheted it up to become fully invested just as the market peaked. And this goes all the way back now to 1971. We're in Professor Robert Cavish's class, and we said um, – you know, Nixon abandoned the gold standard, and Professor Cavish says, well, this means the United States is committed to a permanent long-term policy of inflation. And what effect is that going to have? He said, well, that means you're going to be able to borrow money much more easily, but this raises debt levels. Whenever the downturn comes, then uh, companies are in more trouble. They have to issue yet more credit. And he said, so market swings are probably going to become bigger and quicker. And when the market crashed in 87, I called my old friend Art Merrill who wrote Behavior of Prices on Wall Street, and I said, Art, this looks like a completed correction. In terms of determining whether a correction is over or not, what would you rely on more, price or time? And he said, well, if I had to pick one, it would be price. I said, so this 87 crash could be a completed bear market? And he said, yes, that's what I think. So at the moment, uh, I have no positions in the S&P. I closed my inverse uh, position out. And I think it's going to turn back down, and I'm looking to reestablish that, but I don't see it right here. So if okay. we go down to bonds, you we see you. bonds. I took every last penny I had and stashed it into bonds in uh, July, and you could see why. The two strongest months for bonds are July and August. And so that's how we begin the analysis. Next question. Let's look at the weekly bond cycle. That is on page 10. Does that point up? Yes, it points up till the end of the month. So the – Histogram, which is historical, includes every year, is supported by this weekly cycle. Let's now go one more slide down and look at the monthly cycle. And the monthly cycle goes up into, oh, that's early October. And um, as uh, some trader once said, if you can be right, 60% of the time you can make a fortune. Well, just using the calendar histogram that I showed you, uh, you're up 60% of the time anyway in July and August, and with these two cycles pointing up, it's got to be greater than 60. Hmm. Okay, we've got to pay a few bills, uh, Bill, and then we'll be right back with Bill Meridian of uh, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, we've got the chart of the JGB oh, the annual bond. cycle up. Okay, well, you already reviewed the monthly bond and what I want to point out here, this is the Japanese bond. Notice that July and August are also the strongest months in Japan for fixed income instruments. And let's go down one more and look at the Bund, which is the German equivalent, uh, July and August. So interest rates move uh, in tandem worldwide. So not only are all the bond cycles pointing up in the U.S., but uh, it's supported by the JGB and the Bund. So let's go down now to the gold breakout. And uh, that little period in there from late June – to early uh, to late July. Remember when I was on last time, I said the cycles, the monthly and the weekly cycles are pointing down and the gold is only going sideways. So there's got to be an incredible rally coming up as soon as they turn up, which they did. And if you go down one more slide to number 15, you'll notice that there's a tendency for gold to bottom in June, then appreciate through July, August, September, Gold is up in August 60% of the time, in September 61% of the time, but the percentage gain in September is much higher. So that's why these are bars of expected return. In other words, 0.61% times some return. That's why uh, September is so far ahead of August. And if you put it on an annual basis, the annual low in any year is either in June or around August 8th or so. So now okay. let's take a look at the weekly gold cycle, and we'll see that the weekly gold cycle is turned up, and it does not turn down until mid-September, which is a strong month. So now this is, this is the challenge. You see that red sell signal in September 15th. We just saw September is the strongest month. So usually when this happens, the weekly cycle is an absence of everything else. It's valuable. But with the other cycles pointing up, it might just mean another flat period. So let's go down one more to the monthly cycle, and here you see the monthly cycle also headed up, so it hasn't even given a buy signal yet. It gives it uh, this week, and so I think between here and the middle of September, you know, you simply hold gold. If it gets, uh, if it gets overbought, I would not. Now, here's how you figure in the uh, technical indicators. The um, if it gets overbought, it is not necessarily a sell signal. It can stay overbought for quite a while. It's when the cycles turn down that the overbought indications mean something. Mm -hmm. And let's go down one more. Gold has made a major breakout. And if you plain vanilla technical analysis, that's an asymmetrical triangle or rising triangle. And if you take the height of it and you add it to the breakout point, at a minimum, I come up with 1620. So gold could very well be trading 1600, 1650 by the middle of September. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not now, far away. Another week like this one, they'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I know that. That's that's another problem. When the price objective gets fulfilled, what do you do? So 
here the oil monthly cycle points in one direction. It looks like an Austrian ski slope. It points straight down. Now, uh, you know, I take that with a bit of a grain of salt as I go to the weekly one. And notice that we had, um, see, on the red, all the way on the left, we had a sell signal in June, and it finished that period on the downside. Then you had a buy signal, and it finished slightly up, so that signal was successful. Then we had a sell signal that was successful. And now we have a buy signal, but notice gold is, uh, oil rather, is down since the buy signal. Well, that's what starts to happen when you have um, a monthly cycle pointing down. And we don't really get a sell until the end of this month. Now let's look at the monthly expected return of oil. And here, again, August and September, you know, from all these slides, you're probably getting the right impression. There's no sense to have cash uh, July through September in any of these markets. You might as well be fully invested. So you'll notice August is about the third strongest month in any year. So that'll probably cushion any decline. But after that, September's down, and uh, the October and November are the two most bearish months. Mm -hmm. So right now, I have a short position in gold that's probably looking at today's movement break even at the moment. I had a profit in it. I'm sticking with it, and I've got to stop. If it gets triggered, I'll just wait until the next uh, that weekly cycle downturn, which is late in this month, and I'll short it again. Because you'll notice it's running out of steam September, October, and November. Okay. And so recently, Hong Kong has been in the news, and that is a horoscope set for Hong Kong's uh, being passed back to the People's Republic of China, July 1, 1997. I don't have an exact time for it. I think it was midnight, though. And so mm -hmm. why is this suddenly uh, a big issue? Well, in, in astrology terms, the sun at nine cancer is square Mars at six Libra, which is telling you that uh, this was not – uh, peace was only going to last so long. And in the horoscope of uh, the uh, People's Republic, the sun is around 8 degrees Cancer, which is right where the sun is here. And in their chart, they have a Mars-Pluto conjunction, which means they will not hesitate to use force to uh, resolve any disputes. Both of those are stimulated right now, which is why you're getting uh, the results we're getting. And I <laughs> honestly think that the uh, the key here, if you go to the next slide... In June of 2020, there's an eclipse, and that red line you see is the exact shadow of the eclipse. And you'll notice it, it uh, shadows, uh, the shadow passes right through Taiwan, right through mainland China, and is close enough to Hong Kong. So that tells me that's been a very important eclipse for that entire region. <laughs> and those black lines, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but they're from the ACG map. Those are... That is, um, the planets in the horoscope of the eclipse turned into lines and plotted on a map. And you'll notice they intersect the red line and go right through Hong Kong. And uh, so let's go down to June. And in this, uh, this is page 24, in this analysis, I've also looked at Carrie Lam's horoscope, the People's Republic of China, and several other uh, horoscopes. And so Carrie Lam, uh, Pluto is 180 degrees to her progressed sun through 2019 and 2020. So she's under pressure, likely from Beijing, to enact restrictive laws like the one that led to the unrest last spring. So, or it was this spring, the, um, the last spring, that would be okay. The June solar eclipse path poses, <laughs> passes closely to the north of Hong Kong. This appears to be symbolic of many arrests. The conclusion is that the themes of 019 will carry into 2020, with June being the key month. That will likely be the epicenter of unrest, as the people aren't going to take this lying down, and she's going to be pressured by China to crack down. China is under some economic pressure, because as I pointed out in one of your shows, Pluto is passing over their Jupiter, the same aspect that occurred in the horoscope of New York City in the Beam administration in the early 73 or so, when the city went broke. So... They are their economic problems are probably going to be in the headlines next year. There are also three Jupiter returns. Now that's where Jupiter takes 12 years to go all the way, all the way around the chart, comes back to its original place, and it makes people more expansionary or Jupiterian, or in this case, I would say imperialistic. So they're going to be looking to expand. And the June 21 solar eclipse is 45 degrees to their Mars-Pluto conjunction, which means they would rather fight than switch. So they're not going to let up on the pressure. So I think. You're liable to see a very hard crackdown in June, and at the bottom, the Hong Kong stock market is likely to respond to the downside, especially in March and in June. 
So I don't think the Hong Kong market is a place where you can uh, buy and hold. Uh, I think you can trade it by shorting it in March and June, but I would not uh, uh, be owning that stock market. Bill, we had to pay a few bills, and would you stay with yeah. us? I would like to get sure. contact on some yeah. of the books. And yeah, we'll be right back with yeah. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, do you want to tell the folks? Yeah, I'm here. Why don't you tell the folks how they can reach you and what you uh, – I'd like to know more about those yeah, YouTube well channels. Oh, the YouTube channel, well, planetary stock trading has not been updated in a long time. But if you want to know how first trade charts work, that's what I do most of the time for my own account. Mastering Geolitical Pro Geopolitical Prediction is the newest book. And that's a picture of it on the next page, page 26. It's about mundane forecasting, which is how I came up with Hong Kong. And if you go down one more slide, they can uh, get me at uh, BillMeridian.com. They can email me through there. They can sign up for the monthly letter. And... Um, uh, that's it. And I just wanted to say with the uh, planetary stock trading, I had not mentioned this, but you asked the question of what did I do. I um, routinely I go through every stock that's reporting earnings and I use uh, a method explained in my book, Planetary Stock Trading, now in its fourth edition. And um, I buy 
I take an equal amount of money and I take the three to five or six stocks that I like the best and I buy them right. I mean, I, I may take these positions literally as the market closes. Sometimes I miss and I don't even get a trade off. And I put an equal amount of money in each one. One of them is not going to work out as planned, you know, despite all the work that I did. And I have my own X-file of cases that never worked out. And I know, still don't know why on some of them. But you know, one of them is going to do OK. But two or three of them are going to do so well. And I'll tell you how I got this technique from Andy Lanier, who was a top broker on Wall Street. He was with Lehman Brothers. He wrote the book Confessions of a Stockbroker. I met him once. And he said, I, I bring in X amount of money every week through my clients and contacts. And he said, your job, if I hire you as an analyst, would be you've got to research five companies that we select and get all the answers for Friday. And Friday, we decide which of these com five, top five companies we're going to split the money up into. Now, and he bowled me over, one of those companies is going to go broke. I said, oh, this guy's a top broker on Wall Street. And he says, one stock will be flat, two stocks will outperform the averages, but one of them is the next Microsoft, Intel, Cisco. It's going to do fabulously well. And what's the limit on the downside? Minus 100%. What's the limit on the upside? There is none. And that's the philosophy I adopted. And wow. uh, that's what works. That's great. Hey, Bill, and thanks Larry, a lot, buddy. Nice to talk to you. Hey, you bet, my bye friend. Bye. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. But that last 30 seconds was worth the price of admission, folks. See you Monday morning.